got a couple of things that I've I've got to get going here, and this is I've, I've got to control. It's really not a big deal, but I got to control my cameras from uh, overheating. The GoPros have a tendency to overheat um, when they're recording at a higher frame rate. I'm using 60 frames per second, um, super view wide, uh, 5.3K. So in doing so, it uses a lot of processing power, it uses a lot of battery, and in that process, it heats up the camera. So if I'm using the camera, let's say in the cab like this, it's gonna overheat within 15 minutes and shut down. So I've got to actually power the camera with my USB ports located right here. Um, and also, I've got two switches here which don't have anything in them that I'm going to use as USB ports as well. So I'm going to daisy chain off of a new USB port that I put in here. I'm going to put this rectangular USB 3 port. in one of these switch outlets so it gives me access for at least one camera on a, on a kick and um, also a USB 2 I believe or 3. Um, in any case I'm going to put one of these in and one of these in. This one's going to give me the voltage that the tractor's riding at digital. It's going to be good. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this put this in one of these and then run a jumper wire underneath but I've got to take this entire housing off pretty good at it now I've done it quite a bit in the past so I should be able to do it okay record and it's recording I don't get the dreaded your uh, you know your camera doesn't have enough power that I previously got this is awesome. This makes such a big difference. This camera, no battery, is now running that. And I don't have to turn it off, turn it on, start recording, pull the battery out. And then as soon as it loses power for some reason, shut the tractor off. I've got to do that whole process again. In the past, I was having lockup issues every not every but i would say the majority of time within 15 minutes two things would happen the camera would overheat even without the battery uh, but with the battery it would overheat and i believe that was happening because i didn't have the charging uh, amperage to allow the camera to charge or to run off of the dc provided externally and instead it was discharging the battery which overheated the camera so my guess is now that i've got this new two amp usb port installed i can keep the battery inside the camera and run off of dc external without impacting the heat build up inside the camera i'm just going to fill the camera to see it's warm so i'm I, i'm anxious to see what that's going to do so we'll go ahead now and um, pull out one of these covers. I think I'll do this one. It doesn't really matter which one. They're both, um, they're both something that you can take out pretty easily. Uh, I'm going to see if my new square cover fits in here. Be nice. I don't know if it will. Like it might be a little bit narrow to go in there. So let's see. I'm going to just try to pop that in there. It looks like it might, it, it's going to go right in. Whoops. Look at that. Let's see if I can get that. I'm sorry, that twisted on you. But this, after taking this cover out here, I can take this slide it right in and it should snap in place 
there we go. Now I have the third charging port down here. So if I want to run extension cords to power this, I can do that. The only thing I've got to do now is to power it from the back side. Because I have really good power here with nothing else on it, I'll be able to I'll be able to daisy chain from here over to here with a couple of wires. So I'll be able to take this, and this is also fused, which is really nice. Um, this is fused at 7.5 amps. And I'm going to be running six, maybe. So two, four, six, eight. So this isn't going to work, but this will work just for this one. So if I wanted to, I could take this wire, take these terminations here off, re-terminate them with pigtails and go into this. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Then I can go right here with a plus and a minus. those covers down over there so I'm protected against any grounding uh, should those fall off I can run this wire back and forth here and then I will be able to daisy chain right here onto these two I'll have my third outlet right here generally I don't need three USB at a time even though I have three cameras um, but it's nice if I have a camera that's discharging quickly and I, I want to run it off of a USB, like an outside camera, I can plug it in to that third port if I need to in an emergency. I have 12 batteries. Do I always have them with me? I don't always have them with me. Um, so if I don't have a battery, maybe it's easier just to plug it in uh, and, and use it that way. But these are the fittings I have. So this is going to allow me uh, the option of plugging in to the existing port on this round USB. Then on the end, I can plug in my feed wire. And on the other side, I can screw the terminal on and tape this up good, I should be good. So that's what I'm going to do. In order to do that, I've got to power that off. I don't want to mess around too much, so I want to put the wires on before I hook this up. So I can do that now while you're watching. see a voltage reading now on this. Let's just check that out. Those aren't going to touch each other, so I'm good there. There we are. We have 12.6 volts. That is great to be able to see that. I have three QC3 ports. I should be able to run three cameras. Uh, let me go ahead and plug this back in. Take the battery out. Okay, so no battery. This port's fine. This port's fine. This old port that I had, even though it said it was a 2.1, not good. Doesn't function. Doesn't power them. So I am I'm extremely happy that this went so well, that it's so easy. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, call this part of the project done for the day. And I've got some other things that I've got to do. I'm going to mow. 
I'm going to put some docks in the water. I've got to put this back together, so hold on tight. This one works. This one apparently doesn't work for some reason. So I'm going to have to get a six foot, so we got three, four, seven, maybe a, if they have a ten foot straight mini uh, USB here, if I can get this in ten foot, this is going to be a solution for me, uh, hopefully. I hope the distance that I'm running that USB over isn't going to be the limiting factor. Right now, it's an issue because I don't have anything up here for uh, to run a camera. If I had something up here, then a short cable, I can go to either side. That's awesome. I might put something in here next to the radio. Uh, I could drill. I don't have a radio. I use my phone. I guess I could use a, a radio at some point in time. Um, I don't know. I could drill. So. I could drill a hole in here and grab power from something up there. This is not going to work when the tra tractor's off. I could branch off of this cable that I have down below here that I have installed. Bring that up through the header and over here uh, and power another, um, another unit off of that same wire. That would be awesome. Uh, I could also put, if I'm going to go that route, put a wire up here, I can put a circuit breaker somewhere here, possibly, or down below, um, so that I don't have to take this apart if there's an issue. Maybe even right here on the side, do a circuit breaker. It's just a small, you know, I mean, if I were to be able to put that in here somewhere, then I've got plenty of power. I can branch off of it, run a circuit up here. I can run a circuit over here. I have access to the breakers here. You can even attach it to the pan in the back. Uh, and that would be awesome as well. Or take the wire that I currently have, feed it right up here, and put it right here on the ceiling. I put it on the ceiling, now I can branch off of that over and down and have another one right here, which is going to give me three or four locations for power inside this cab instead of simply running everything right here. It's an interesting option and uh, something I'll look at.